2020. Uh, we send our greetings to you from Finland. Uh, it has been beautiful summer season here in the country. So if, if you have never visited here, you definitely uh, might want to reconsider it. Uh, my name is Ibek and I'm business development manager at Trion and will be also moderator of today's webinar. Today's webinar topic is related to Trion Gateway platform. Uh, for the first time, Trion will introduce its unique IoT platform, uh, which enables organizations to fast track into the world of massive IoT and bring the ease and cost efficiency of solution development to a new level and scale. In this webinar, Trion's partners Schaffler and Bilot uh, will elaborate on the role of Trion Gateway within their large-scale projects and provide you with first-hand experience of utilizing the platform. To introduce today's speakers, on behalf of Trion, we have Ismo, who is a CTO and co-founder of the organization. Uh, there is no better person who could elaborate on Trion Gateway and reveal its major technical advancements than Ismo, as he was in charge of the product software development for the past four years. Uh, as well, we are very lucky to have today our guest speakers from global leading organizations within their domain. Uh, on behalf of Shuffler, we have Andreas, who will tell more about organization's digital journey and their newly introduced wireless condition monitoring solution. Importantly, he will answer why Shuffler chose Trion's gateway as an integral part of their solution. Next, we have Slava, who will represent Pilot, and similarly, he will introduce his organization and describe how they utilize Trion IoT platform, as well reveal its perceived benefits. Uh, the housekeeping rules are pretty much straightforward and standard. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to you uh, after it concludes on your email. Uh, the questions, uh, the Q&A session will be held by the end of this webinar and to be asked via the question panel in your console. And for some of you, the presentation will be shared on demand after the webinar. Uh, the agenda for today will start with the introduction to Trion, uh, as well as elaboration on Trion Gateway platform. Uh, then we'll have uh, the success story of our partners and uh, finish with Q&A session. To start with, uh, Trion is a wireless product making company located in the city of Tampere in Finland. Uh, our expertise lies in wireless technologies both on hardware and software level. As we say, it, uh, we develop hardware by craft and approach software with heart, since we understand that both are integral pieces of any product making disruption. Uh, interestingly, our organizational values are built around the rich historical heritage of Tampere, dating back to 18th century when the first light bulb in Nordics was placed at Finlayson factory and fast forward several centuries when first digital telephones were introduced. Uh, the city is rich for technological catalysts and our product making experience comes from the most competitive consumer mobile market industry. Meaning that changing the history of the world by introducing technological innovation is in our blood. And that's why in 2016, Trion was founded, basically to disrupt a rapidly emerging market of IoT with an open, scalable, and cost-effective IoT devices. And now we open new horizons for ourselves, as well as industry, by introducing Trion Gateway Platform. Every great product has its story a fuel which drives the change and drives the innovation. And we are not an exception to this rule. In 2018, we have introduced our first wireless device, Trion Note. By bringing this environmental device, we made a statement of our ambitions and objectives in the area of mass massive IoT. In 2019, we introduced Trion Industrial Note and an early version of Trion Gateway, which, which brought the industrial asset monitoring to a new scale. In 2020, we are introducing Trion Asset Node, Trion Asset Sensor, and Trion Industrial Gateway, which will be detrimental drivers of massive IoT in logistics and transport area. By enabling 
variety of vertical massive IoT use cases and continuous development of our gateway within the last four years, we have managed to bring a truly unique and complete horizontal product to the market. With our experience in, in each of these verticals, we have accumulated all of our knowledge and experience into a single product, which will allow any organization to tune into massive IoT. Uh, but the question might be why this is important and what's the value behind implementation of the platform? And the answer to that is that building IoT solutions is complex and very challenging process. However, when we talk about large-scale IoT, the complexity rises to a new whole level. And it doesn't come as a surprise that when such projects uh, take several years of intensive development and demand significant investments. But what if there would be a reliable and, so to say, battle-tested infrastructure that would allow to have quick head start into the development process and help to minimize uh, R&D expenditures. A versatile platform which allows to build and customize such solution with an ease. And this is essentially the question which we have asked ourselves here at Trion. As a result, we have developed cost-efficient, versatile, and intelligent solution which effectively solves these challenges. In simple terms, we made it easy for any organization to tune into development of massive IoT solution and see its benefits within the shortest timeframes, without necessarily building everything from scratch and investing millions into its development. So what is Trion Gateway platform exactly? Essentially, Trion Gateway offers platform which collects, processes, and transmits data from sensors to any cloud platform and to any cloud applications. We have developed an infrastructure with the right tools, which allows for any organization to develop a tailored solution, which will meet their specific needs. The key was to develop horizontally versatile product, which can be implemented in a variety of verticals and utilized as a basis of your solution. Uh, you can think of it as a powerful magic stick, which allows you to cast any spells, and imagination will be your only uh, limitation when using Trion Gateway Platform. We truly believe that by enabling our customers to develop their solution on top of our platform's architecture, they can truly focus their resources on what they do best. And on this note, I will give the word to our CTO, Ismo, who would break down the slide for you and elaborate with more depth on the capabilities of Trion Gateway Platform. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Ibeck. Let's see, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you as well. Oh, Perfect. good, good. Yeah, let me let me share the presentation. So now you should be seeing seeing basically I'm continuing from the slide that Ibeck Ibeck finished. So is the is the view also okay? Yeah, the view is also fine. Okay, good. Okay, so let let me continue continue from from this from this slide with with bit bit more kind of technical details. I'm I'm Ismo Manninen, CTO of Trion, and being kind of keenly involved in in our our software platform platform development. So so this is this picture can be also used as a kind of overall technical representation of our, our gateway platform so the it shows on the on the on the most overall level the, the main interfaces so we have two main interfaces outside we, we have the kind of backend interface to, to cloud or in-premise backends we are supporting MQTT and HTTP interfaces to the to the backends, and then then the, the other main interface is towards the the sensor side. So our our main support we 
our first support was was Wirebus mesh support, and, and now we are we basically have a beta version of the PLE as, as well. And then important part of the of the platform is also that in in addition to only uh, only moving the sensor data from the sensors to the cloud, we we also we also provide support for for Wirepass network tool from our platform, being able to analyze the the mesh network behavior, and then we we have defined our own device simple device management command. So so Creon device management enables users to modify our the the gateway behavior, for example. Uh, update the software or the gateway, or, or then modify the behavior of the connected sensors. So, depending on the sensor capabilities, we are able to modify the sensor behavior, like a sampling interval or, or ranges, or then then update the software of the of the sensors as as well. The, it's also the, this picture is also kind of good good start to to describe this. This, this, how we are, how we are cost efficient and versatile. So, the cost efficiency, of course, comes that we do provide the full platform. So, we do provide all this basic functionality: connecting to the cloud, processing the Treon sensor data, and then, then can super, we provide the sensors to to provide you the data. We also kind of partner partner with, with companies to provide you the UI if you are not willing to or able to develop develop something you from your own. So basically you, you can buy a ready ready-made solution directly for, from us or then the other other alternative which goes to this versatile side is that customer willing to do so you you are free to use our platform to build on something of your own. So, so you can build your own applications to the gateway. The gateway is an embedded Linux computer, so we do provide kind of flexibility and intelligence. There's there's memory and, and processing performance available to to build your own applications and do your own data processing if you if you choose to do so. So, so that's that, that's the meaning of this native application box. So that we do provide out of the box the 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 gateway supports Python and Node.js, and we also can provide you the SDK to 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 make native C applications if you if you choose to do so. Okay, then moving moving to the next slide. Let's see. Here go. So now this is a bit bit more technical details that how how we how we make this versatile and how we how we make this this platform platform comprises of of three main layers in the system so so there's, there's the there's a treon sensor layer which is capable of of connecting various sensor uh, connectivity methods like i said we now we support wirepass connectivity and then we have a we have a BLE as, as a beta we are we have not released that yet as, as a product but we are we have a kind of trials may coming coming out from the BLE the, the sensor layer is effectively only responsible of moving moving data from sensors to the gateway and and vice versa the, the other way around then the Treon data layer is, is responsible of processing either transcoding or or then doing some more intelligent stuff to the to the data. The, the data layer processes data kind of both ways. For example, our, our offering contains the transcoding of binary sensor data to, to Treon JSON. Which is then kind of easy to process in the in the backend, and we are we are also providing you the the device management as a, as a data processing block. So the device processing processes the device management messages coming from the backend, and then then does 
does whatever is requested by, by the command. And then the third topmost layer, the, the backend layer, the responsibility here is to, to create the backend connectivity. And, and here we support various connectivity options. We, from, from protocol wise, we, we currently support MQTT and, and HTTP protocols. And, and then the cloud connectivity layer also takes care of the authentication to the backend. So we, we, we support X509 certificates, basic HTTP authentication, Azure connection strings, and it's kind of easy to easy to add more more support for some some specific connectivity. Okay, maybe one one more is that kind of one of the special examples is that we support the web web IoT ticket, which is a bit. It is basically an HTTP transport, for, or it is an HTTP transport, but there's a specific authentication and the data, data formats that we, we also support. So now, now the data, data between these layers, these processing blocks, is, is moving over, over a socket interface. And we are, it's, a, it's a socket interface, and, and we are using a, a, a library called Zero MQ. Q there on top of the socket. The, the nice thing is that we are we are using so-called publish subscribe model. So the data producer, for example, the wirepass adapter is publishing the data, and then the data processing unit, the data consumer can subscribe the data if it's able to understand and if it's interested about the data. So for example, when we receive wirepass data from endpoint 2, the adapter publishes the data using topic 2. And, and then the data processing layer, if it, if it understands the data, it can subscribe to topic 2. And, and it will know that that's a Treon sensor data. And, and this, this process continues to the same. The, the method is same on the next level. So the data processing layer is publishing data which then a proper cloud connectivity component can subscribe and, and process further basically sent to the cloud so the the benefits benefits here in the architecture is that this these layers are these layers are loosely coupled the processes are processing units are loosely coupled they are separate unix processes and and so there's a well-defined message interface between the processes so it's kind of easy to Add your own stuff, stuff there as well. And then the another benefit here is that this is a because of the publish subscribe model, it's kind of easy. There can be multiple processing components and there can be multiple providers of the data. So like we can we can simultaneously run the wirepass adapter and the Bluetooth adapter and, and have a separate processing units processing both data. So basically, the cloud doesn't even necessarily have to know what is the what is the mesh connectivity layer behind. But they they will just receive the JSON data, having, for example, a temperature, and the and the and the backend doesn't have to know the type of the sensor if it's not necessary for the for the sensor. And and then then this this dashed line on the on the right hand side of the picture shows just the versatile nature that. We internally we are enforcing this layering with our application, but then of course the customer is, is free to choose the layering. So if the customer is developing their own application, they can choose to implement a processing block on a single layer, or then they can potentially implement uh, something that, that spans over several layers. So so we this is then up to the customer decision, design decision, how to how they how how they use our platform. It's, it's not mandated, but we are we are doing this layering because of the of the clarity. This concludes the, the the technical presentation, how this how this platform looks looks, and, and I'm I'm ready to hand out the, the the to the next presenter. I understand that's Andreas. 
Yes, thank you very much, Ismo. That was quite mm -hmm. an insightful information. Uh, if you, uh, for the attendees, if you do have questions to Ismo, please ask them in the question section and we'll come back to them a bit later. Uh, and now, Andreas, I will provide you with the presenters, right? Please confirm right. if you have received it. Okay, can I choose? Right, I'll pick this one here. Let me know when you can see my screen. Uh, yes, now we can see it well. Okay, very good. Great. So, good morning. My name is Andreas Kuhl. I'm the product manager for the Optime hardware and Optime is the system I want to introduce to you today. Andres, I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, there yeah? in the presentation, it's not in the presenter's view, so we can see your okay. Uh, the whole Press screen. F5. Yeah. And I'll do that here. Okay, yep. no, now. now it's correct. Better? Yeah, okay. yeah, much better. So pressing F5 doesn't always help here. <laughs> right. All right, so. Talking about uptime and the role which the, the Trion gateway plays in this. Um, first, for those of you who are not familiar with, with Scheffler, I will briefly ex explain who Scheffler is. Um, Scheffler mainly does bearings. We do bearings from a bore diameter of one millimeter for, for your dentist and uh, up to tunnel boring machines, which can have a diameter of, of uh, three meters or more. So that, that's our main business. We're active in the automotive sector. And of course, uh, we're delivering bearings for the industry. And I'm now located in that industry sector, and especially there in the industry 4.0 sector. Um, we're offering um, a number of mechatronic solution, but this is not the focus today. Uh, today, we will look into the condition monitoring um, section where you can also already see the uptime sensor. We're offering services and other stuff in addition, but, but that is not of importance today. Um, what enables us to deliver or develop a solution like uptime is, of course, the bearing experience we have gathered over 70 years in the past, but it's also supported by some 20 years of condition monitoring experience on the one hand and on, on, on the other hand we also are operating uh, more than 70 plants all over the world so we do have um, experience um, directly from the plant from maintenance and so on and all that enables us to to create something like op time now next step um, some very basic things on the topic condition monitoring because i don't know whether you are aware of the topic condition monitoring is, is basically listening to a machine um, to detect whether there's something going wrong um, in that machine detecting the failure quite early will give you some pre-warning time allows you to react um, you can avoid the unplanned downtime you can plan your maintenance work. Um, you can avoid consequential damages. So it's just one bearing failing instead of a whole gearbox. And you can maybe later on try to find out what's ha what has been the cause of this particular damage. Normally, you can use vibration for this. This temperature would also be possible. But uh, nowadays, uh, most of the condition monitoring systems will be based on vibration. Um, Condition monitoring is around for quite a while now, and uh, especially the paper industry is using it quite often. And if you look in such a, into, into a paper plant, you can see that um, about 6% of the machines are permanently monitored with, with um, large online systems. Then you have another 8%, which will be done on a regular basis or tour or route based with, with manual devices. And um, roughly half of the possible measuring points are not attended at all. And this is based some kind of the motivation for us to, to maybe look into that and try to find out what do we have to do to tackle the remaining part, not the 6% for the really critical machines, but what about the 90 plus percent um, that is currently not covered uh, by condition monitoring thoroughly. 
And um, we thought about what has to be done to, to enter that market. And we came to the conclusion that we need a system which is on one hand affordable because price always plays a role. And on the other hand, it has to be easy in really every aspect. Because if we, as an expert, we think that our solution is, is easy um, for the customer, that may be a completely different picture. And um, if I'm looking at that affordable and easy, this almost directly brings me to a wireless solution because cable solutions are expensive and it's, it's a lot of effort running the cables. And in some occasions, um, the, the cost for the cabling can be on the same level as the cost for the, for the whole system. So that was one of the first things. We have to get rid of the cables. We will need a wireless solution. And um, we cannot take any wireless solution because if you look into a, an industrial environment, um, then you will very often not have a line of sight to each measuring point. Um, so some of the points will be, will be kind of hidden somewhere, blocked by machines. So the only feasible solution in such an environment uh, finally is a mesh solution. And we decided, and that was mentioned before, um, to go for the wire pass mesh because of some of the nice properties it has. So now let's look at the system. Um, maybe starting with, with the sensors, uh, point number four. Um, we have developed um, plug and play sensors. It has to be as easy as possible. I will give you some more details on that later. We're measuring temperature and vibration. Uh, typical lifetime for the sensors is about five years. Uh, of course, it depends on the temperature. If you want to run the um, sensors at the upper limit of above 80 degrees, um, you will probably not reach the full five years. And we knew that we would have to offer a very attractive price being uh, a fraction of what you normally would have to pay for a measuring point. Next step is the um, before mentioned uh, mesh network from, from WirePass. We need um, an automatic network management. Device provisioning has to be very easy and it has to optimize battery life. Then we, to deliver the results, we will have to um, do automatic measurements and we even implemented uh, self-learning for the alarm limits. So in the analytics, we have gathered a lot of um, different techniques like machine learning, like some special algorithm and so on and so on, based on, on our experience and also on some, some brand new approaches on that topic. And finally, the guy in the plant needs to have his information condensed. And that's why we decided to um, follow a mobile first approach. So the guy at the machine gets all the information right into his mobile because the guys will always have mobiles with them. Um, it was really, um, I think, obvious that, that we should be able to provide our information right onto that mobile. In addition to that, um, of course, there's a PC app where you can have a more detailed view where you can set up your set and so on and so on. And if you look at the function now, how is um, a sensor provisioned? Well, it is activated via NFC right off, out of the app. Um, you have to register to the app. So the sensor right away knows um, which customer it belongs to, which network it, it belongs to. So I do not have to type in any network ID uh, or anything like that. The sensor is um, activated right away without further settings. Then the sensor is mounted on the selected machine and it will automatically connect to the, to the gateway. From the gateway, the information is transferred into the um, Scheffler IoT hub, and that's where all the analysis happens. So it's not on the sensor. We're in the sensor, we're just calculating a number of KPIs, but all the analysis work is, is done in the cloud. 
And that result is then transferred to the mobile and also to the um, to the back end to the um, uptime dashboard. And it's important to understand, even though in the beginning the um, the app activates the sensors. After that, if you are looking at any result, even if you're standing in front of the sensors, this result is purely going to come out of the um, Scheffler IoT Hub, not directly from the sensor. And that also explains that we're not selling a sensor here alone. It's always going to be a complete solution, meaning a sensor plus a service. Um, you, you will not be able to operate a sensor alone without uh, the service, without the gateway, without the app. Right, so one and a half years ago, none of that was there. There was no app, there was no PC app, there was no sensor, and there was no gateway. And we knew that that would be a lot of work, and that's why we were very happy that at least for the gateway, there's another way to approach the problem because we um, decided to utilize an already existing product from Trion um, because it would allow us a very short time to market. Um, we are allowed to put our own application onto that system and there were a number of tools making that quite easy. Um, it already supports the wire pass mesh, so no further effort on that side. Um, we need a cellular connection to connect to the Scheffler IoT Hub. Main reason for that is we do not want to, to um, interfere with the customer IT. This always needs to, leads to problems, so that's why cellular connection is a must. The Ethernet is, is a nice to have. It would allow us to, to connect some of our other systems to that same gateway. And the Wi-Fi um, can make the configuration a lot easier for us. Um, then, of course, we want to sell that device as Scheffler. So it was mandatory for us to have a Scheffler branding, as you can see in the pictures. Um, and, of course, a Scheffler branded UI as well. And I think that was mentioned before. And um, you can see here on the left-hand side, that was the original one, but that's of course a desktop device. This is nothing you can really use in an industrial environment. So Trion um, uh, developed an IP66 um, enclosure around that gateway together with the power supply. In the top picture, you see the first version of that. Um, of that industrial gateway. And finally, Trian has been able to make it even more compact. And that's the picture you see down on the right-hand side. And um, we were happy that Trion did support us during the whole product development, also helping us uh, being a bit faster with, with our product. Right, so this is now a short glimpse into the app. And I, I mentioned that uh, already before. Uh, mobile first approach means that the guy at the machine is now holding the mobile with our app in his hands. And um, that makes it important that he does not have to look at all the whatever 500 machines in his plan, but he can actually build a group for those machines he's responsible for. Um, that's one of the nice features we're offering. Then you can see on the uh, second or third screen this this um, this kind of graph of going from from uh, white from yellow to final to red. That's a very easy way of a of a kind of a condensed alarming. And you probably know that if you want to make something look very easy, it means a lot of effort in the background. So this is really not a single alarm level, but that that's um. um some algorithms uh, and some special logic, which finally gives you that information on, on your machines. And of course you can, if you wish, uh, dig down deeper, look at the different measuring points on your machine, down to the point where you can finally even see the trend information. And um, if you would like to, you can even have a look at the time waveform or the FFT, which in my opinion, doesn't really make a lot of sense on a on a mobile phone. 
In addition to that, if you need some more information or if you want to modify your structure, if you want to register, then of course uh, you would probably go back to the PC app. Um, here you get a lot more information and you, you can also have the tools to, um, to analyze a, an FFT more deeply if you're an expert. But finally, this is not the task. Um, our target here is to, to monitor a very, very large number of sensors. Uh, minimum would be 100 sensors per plant. And we, we will see later that even for the pilots, we are going to, to much higher numbers. So for us, it's, it's most important that we offer a very, very quick overview, taking the workload from the people so that even if there's condition monitoring specialists in that company, um, they can focus their attention on, on those machines where it's really necessary. Right, so that was a quick overview on the system. And I think, yeah, this is a short summary. Um, in the beginning, I mentioned we need something that is affordable. And um, we are now able to monitor a machine for less than 20 cents per day. It should be easy. Um, I saw a video from our guys in, in Finland installing a sensor and it took them, I think, uh, 57 seconds. Um, it should be done in, in two minutes easily. Um, means that you can actually install hundreds of sensors within some hours. If you have ever installed a um, full-scale cable condition monitoring system, um, it will take you an easy two days to have uh, 16 channels um, wired um, and, and uh, net, set the network up completely. So it's a lot easier, a lot faster than uh, with the previous systems. And we have added the whole Scheffler expert knowledge into the app and into the diagnosis. And all that combines together to the new Optime solution. Now I will show you now some examples um, of pilots. So the system has been released just about a week ago. So it's, it's uh, not even or so just shortly on the market. So what I can show you now is just some pilots. We started um, roughly half a year ago. Um, one of them is in one of our own plants. As you can see here, we have uh, 151 sensors um, on, on 12 gateways in 10 buildings. So I guess from a tree on understanding, this is not massive IoT. The situation here is a bit different because we have to transmit um, quite a lot of data. And uh, if, we are, if I should give an estimate, we would probably put, let's say 70 sensors max on a gateway. Um, it, it does work with more, I think I heard about like 120, 130 percent per gateway, but we normally aim for something between 50 to 70 sensors on a, on a single gateway. And our biggest pilot at the moment is, is a paper plant. Um, uh, in, in the meantime, so it has been changed in the past. In the meantime, we are up at uh, 468 sensors. And, and keep in mind, this, this is just a pilot. This is not the whole plant being equipped. So with, with such a plant, you can have an easy 1000 sensors inside that plant. Here we are having 14 gateways in, in, in five different um, buildings leading to an average of about uh, 30 sensors per gateway. And the last um, pilot we're having, sorry, someone is disturbing. But well, we'll leave it like that. Uh, that's a cement mill. Um, here we have 128 sensors on, on 10 gateways. So meaning that there's not too many uh, sensors per gateway. And we're having one fairly critical situation here because um, we are going through a tunnel with the, um, with the uptime sensors. And that, that uh, turns out to be quite tricky, but uh, could also be solved. So, well, and as you've seen in, in those pictures, you have a, you get a pretty good idea about the environment we're in. So um, not easily accessible. Sometimes you would have to go down in a cellar even or on a higher floor. 
uh, it can be dirty. Some places are not easy to access. So if you have a um, handheld device, you would have to climb up, which is also a safety issue. So there's a very good reason for, for using a solution like Optime. Not, of course, on every machine, but um, on most of, a machine, of the machines in a plant, um, Optime can be um, a very good approach. And I think that was it from my side. And I think the question answer session is going to be sometime later. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you a lot, Andreas, for such insightful and elaborative presentation that you have conducted. Uh, for the attendees, if you on. might have any questions uh, to Andreas, I will include his email by the end of this presentation. Uh, if you would like to learn more, again, as mentioned previously, do not hesitate to contact us. And uh, Trion as an organization at the forefront innovations in the area of IoT. Uh, we are only starting to accelerate, so we welcome everyone to join this interesting journey with us. And not more and not less, uh, but to change the world together. Uh, on this note, I would like to wish everyone a great week and see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.